Ever thought about how much space 7 billion people take up on this planet? Now imagine that number growing each day, each year, and each decade. We're talking about overpopulation here, a topic that's as complex as it is critical. The world's population is currently over 7 billion and, according to the United Nations, we're on track to reach nearly 10 billion by the year 2050. That's a lot of people needing food, water, energy, and space. And let's not forget about the toll this takes on our natural environments and wildlife which are being pushed to their limits. Overpopulation isn't just a numbers game, it's about the strains we place on our planet's resources and ecosystems, and the challenges we face in ensuring a sustainable and equitable future for all. It's a conversation we need to have and it's a problem we need to tackle. So what can we do to address this looming crisis? Overpopulation isn't just about the number of people, it's about how we use and share resources. Let's delve deeper into the concept of overpopulation. Imagine a room filled with people. Now think about how many resources each person needs to survive and thrive, food, water, shelter, and so forth. If the number of people in the room exceeds the available resources, we have a problem. That is the essence of overpopulation. It's not just about sheer numbers, but about the balance between the population and the resources they consume. Now, let's expand this room to the whole world. We're currently living on a planet with over 7 billion people, and this number is projected to reach around 9 billion by the middle of the century. However, our resources are not infinite. This imbalance can lead to significant challenges such as food and water shortages, environmental degradation, and an array of social issues. Consider food and water. As the population grows, so does the demand for these vital resources. But the Earth's capacity to produce food and provide clean water is not limitless. If we continue to consume at our current rate, we risk depleting these resources leading to shortages and even famine. The environment is another casualty of overpopulation. More people mean more consumption and waste leading to pollution, deforestation and loss of biodiversity. These changes can have devastating effects on our planet, disrupting ecosystems and contributing to climate change. Lastly, overpopulation can exacerbate social issues. In densely populated areas, competition for resources can lead to conflict and inequality. Moreover, rapid population growth can strain public services like healthcare and education, affecting the quality of life. This might sound bleak, but there are solutions out there. The key lies in understanding the problem and taking collective action. Stay tuned as we explore potential solutions in the upcoming scenes. Remember, it's not just about reducing numbers, but about creating a sustainable world where resources are used wisely and shared equally. One of the ways we can address overpopulation is through smart urban planning and infrastructure. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is urban planning? Simply put, it's the process of designing and shaping the physical layout of cities, towns, and other urban environments. It's not just about where to put the buildings, roads, and parks, but also about creating a sustainable and livable environment for the people who live there. One concept that's gaining traction in the world of urban planning is the idea of sustainable cities. These are cities designed with sustainability in mind, aiming to reduce their environmental impact while providing a high quality of life for their residents. They incorporate features like renewable energy sources, waste management systems, and green spaces that not only look good, but also help to clean the air and provide habitats for local wildlife. But it's not just about the buildings and parks. A crucial part of urban planning is designing efficient public transportation systems. A well-designed public transport system can significantly reduce the number of cars on the road, leading to less traffic congestion, fewer emissions, and improved air quality. It can also make the city more accessible for everyone, regardless of their income or mobility levels. Green buildings are another important aspect of sustainable urban planning. These are buildings designed to minimize their environmental impact using materials and technologies that are energy efficient and sustainable. They might have features like solar panels, rainwater collection systems, or green roofs that help to regulate the building's temperature and reduce its energy use. By incorporating these concepts into our urban planning and infrastructure, we can make our cities more sustainable and livable. We can reduce our environmental impact, improve the quality of life for our residents, and manage our growing populations more effectively. And remember, urban planning and infrastructure are not just about the physical layout of our cities. They're about creating communities that are inclusive, sustainable, and capable of adapting to our changing world. It's about designing cities that work for everyone, now and in the future. 
So yes, our cities and towns can be a part of the solution, not the problem. Education, particularly of women and girls, is another powerful tool in combating overpopulation. The relationship between education and population growth is a significant one. When we delve into the dynamics of this relationship, we find that an increase in the level of education particularly among women directly impacts the rate of population growth. It all begins with empowerment. Empowering women through education provides them with the freedom to make informed decisions, including those about their reproductive health. This empowerment is not merely about personal growth, it also has far-reaching implications for society as a whole. Let's consider this. When a woman is educated, she is more likely to marry later, have fewer children, and be better equipped to provide for her family. This is not just a theory, it's backed by numerous studies that show a direct link between women's education and lower birth rates. But how does this tie into managing overpopulation? Well, lower birth rates mean slower population growth. And slower population growth allows for better management of resources, reducing strain on our planet's finite resources. Moreover, education fosters critical thinking and innovation. An educated population is better equipped to develop and implement sustainable solutions. They understand the importance of resource management, recycling, and conservation. They are more likely to support policies and practices that promote sustainability. What's more, education can break the cycle of poverty. It offers a pathway out of poverty, reducing the pressure on families to have more children as a means of economic security. This, in turn, helps control population growth. To sum it up, education, especially of women and girls, is a potent tool in our arsenal against overpopulation. It empowers individuals, reduces birth rates, promotes sustainable practices, breaks the poverty cycle and ultimately helps manage population growth. But remember, education is not a silver bullet, it's one piece of the puzzle. It needs to be complemented by other measures like urban planning, infrastructure development, family planning, and healthcare provision. Education is not just about building minds, it's about building a sustainable future. Healthcare, particularly reproductive healthcare, plays a crucial role in managing population growth. It's like the steering wheel in the vehicle of societal development, guiding the way towards a sustainable future. Family planning is a crucial aspect of this. It's about giving people the knowledge and means to decide when and how many children they want to have. It's not about telling people what to do, but about empowering them with choice. This choice can be a game changer in managing population growth. Access to contraception is a vital part of family planning. Contraceptives offer a practical solution for couples to plan their families. They give people the freedom to decide when they're ready to bring a new life into the world. This isn't just about controlling population numbers, it's about ensuring that every child is wanted and can be properly cared for. But it's not enough to just have contraceptives available. People need to be able to access them, and they need to know how to use them. That's where reproductive health services come in. These services provide the education and support that people need to make informed decisions about family planning. In many parts of the world, these services are lacking. This isn't just a problem for those individuals, it's a problem for the whole world. Because when people can't access the health care they need, they can't make the best decisions for themselves and their families. And that can lead to rapid population growth with all the challenges that brings. Family planning and reproductive health care are not just about individual choices, they're about societal choices. They're about deciding what kind of future we want to create. A future where every child is wanted. A future where every family is cared for. A future where our population is sustainable. Healthcare is a right and it's also a way to ensure a sustainable future. So, we've talked about the problem and the solutions. Now, it's time for action. Overpopulation isn't a situation we can ignore, it's a ticking time bomb that we all share responsibility for. But don't be overwhelmed, small actions can lead to big changes. Start by supporting policies that encourage sustainable cities, education, and healthcare. These policies are the building blocks for a world where our population can thrive without exhausting our planet. Consider your own lifestyle too. Simple changes can make a big difference. Cut down on consumption, recycle more, maybe even consider a plant-based diet. Remember, every choice we make affects our world. And don't forget to spread the message. Talk to your friends, your family, your colleagues. Let's start a conversation about overpopulation and the strategies we've discussed today. Knowledge is power, and shared knowledge can change the world. Overpopulation is a global problem, but together, we can be part of the global solution.